Maker Legacies. We are uh, back, ready to rock. We had quite an ordeal last week. Some decisions um, were made. Decisions were made. Some good. Some uh, bad. Well, mostly bad. <laughs> Most mostly bad decisions. Uh, but we had a good time. Uh, we killed a couple guards, and Amaris killed a couple guards without breaking up much of a sweat. Uh, we disintegrated some bodies. We delivered some bodies. We found some lost animals. Mm -hmm. And got some people killed. So that... Uh, what did I miss, Jason? <laughs> um, Not too much, really. I mean, you guys split up, uh, separating the party dad, and then letting the kids <laughs> run off and do their own thing by themselves. <laughs> Led to escapades, which led to where you are now, which is always leads uh, to escapades. Always on your way. <laughs> We're never going to learn if he doesn't let there be consequences for our actions. Right. <laughs> yes. uh, oh. yep. yeah. So the consequences the next can be rough. Is Jason tries to present us problems we cannot solve with a hammer. Mm -hmm. So any pretty any. Any problems can be solved with a hammer. I mean, the hammer problems get solved really well, though. They do. <laughs> they get solved super well. Between Have Amherst and Willick, yeah. 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 Hammer uh, twins. <laughs> so the key, though, is that uh, at the end of the session, you guys were given four obsidian horse figurines to use as loners. From the Summer Guard Garrison in Dawn's Watch, in Dawn's Rise, to uh, help expedite, ex ex uh, expedite your travel, yeah, expedite your travel uh, to Terra's Rest. Um, so you guys got to activate them, all four of them. Some of you had to double up on the horses, um, activate their overland flight, which allowed you basically to make a six and a half day journey and probably close to 16 hours. <clears throat> so we are now at the part where you guys are arriving at Terrence rest just a hour or so before dawn. Well, no, hold on. Cause you guys left. Before we left at dawn. noon. Yeah. You guys left at noon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A couple hours before dawn. Okay. Like four or five o'clock in the morning. Okay. As you guys are arriving at what you believe to be Terran's rest, uh, which Corin actually can confirm to everybody is Terran's rest. Well, that is a trip I have never made. Whew. This guy's land with the horses. Um, kind of turn them off, I guess, and they shrink back to their little obsidian statue forms. Now, we can't use those for overland flight for a, only for another eight hours, right? Correct. Before they have to recharge. That's just for overland flight. You can use them as regular Correct. horses? Uh, Correct. All right. Well, Corin, have you uh, you ever been here before? Uh, it's been a while. Well, where might we go to find ourselves? I guess breakfast, somewhere public, some inn, a pub, or something. I think we should go straight to our meeting. Time is of the essence. Right, but it's got to be there, right? I mean, we don't. Where, did, did you remember where it was we were supposed to be going? I don't recall ever being no, told were, other than going told, to the you town. Were told, you were told Terran's Rest. Um, Corin, you know that Terran's Rest refers to both the town and the large inn that the town is based around. Though, around. Uh, so there's an inn in the center of town. We should go there and we'll see what we can scrounge up. That sounds like a good plan. <clears throat> Give you guys a little visual re representation here. Maps! Maps! Of maps! The town, of the town itself. So here we have Terran's Rest. 
Uh, so let's see this one. Uh, Here you have actually the building, Terran's Rest, the large inn that the town has kind of sprung up nearby. Um, let's see. Does anybody have no? Well, I get, yeah. Does anybody have knowledge history? I don't think so. Or not? Or knowledge local? One of the two would be okay. Ooh, I don't have either. Wait, is it knowledge history? Knowledge Hist history, yeah. History or local? Yep, you could. Yep, I mean, you, there are plenty of books in your monastery about no, the history that's of. Still, you don't have points in it. No. Yeah. You're not trained. No much. Oops. Nope. Okay. Uh, that's my knowledge local. That's all, all right. Uh, it's enough to know that. Uh, the town or the uh, let's see, Terran's Rest. Uh, the inn, Terran's Rest, is currently run by Jalinda Terran, a human. Uh, her father founded the inn. Uh, he's been dead probably about 15 years or so. Uh, so she currently runs the inn alongside um, a barkeep slash bouncer. Uh, who You remember there was something special about this barkeeper bouncer, but you don't remember what? It's a trap! Okay. <clears throat> so, you guys have you guys are on the outskirts of town right now. Like you haven't actually made your way into town yet, because you know just landing on flying magical <laughs> horses in town. I don't think it's something that you would necessarily just do. Right, yeah. right, right. Why not? Why not? Also, <laughs> also, Gex is like, what do you want me to do with your thing? Your friend. Yeah, Runt coming with us this time? Yes. Yes, bring Runt. Okay, so, right. you, so you're going to keep shrunken Runt on you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys, uh, you guys yep, made Runt right small last time. So yeah. He's, he looks kind of like, in his current state, he looks kind of like just like a regular bear cub. Aww. As he's shrunken uh, much... and illusioned. How much longer is that going to last? Uh, Gex is like mm. she had she had to re up it while flying so that it wouldn't fall off while you know in mid flight. Yeah, I'm sure that um, would have been fine. Yeah, it would have been okay. Uh, so you have about another two hours or so, she says, before it's going to run out. Probably at, at best an hour and a half to make sure that you know she didn't lose time anywhere. All right, we'll keep an eye on it. I don't think it makes sense to leave him behind. Okay, like I said, right now he just looks like a small bear cub. All right. Let's uh, let's head on into the rest then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Let's go. Okay. You guys, go. Um, you will actually have to stable your horses, not just convert them back, because if you do convert them back to statue form. Uh, it will take a week for them to be usable again in any form. Okay. They last for 24 continuous hours, and that's it. And then they go away for a week. Oh, so they're like a one-shot item. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, then I guess that's what we've got to do. Yep. You guys go to Terrence Rest. Go. They do have a small stable building. It's this one right over here. This is the stable to the inn. All of these belong to the inn. All three of these buildings. So, you guys take them over to the stables first. Corn knows where it's located. Stable the four horses with the stable boy. And then head to the inn. So, entering the inn, it is a large... Uh, it looks from the outside like it should be you know, almost three, you know, probably a good three-story inn. And when you go inside, you notice that it's probably not a three-story inn, probably only two, because the ceilings are extremely high. Oh. Uh, all Closing in on 20 feet. They are big. Uh, so very large vaulted ceilings, like these, like, flying wooden buttresses. Question. Um, yeah. 
How large are the doors? Uh, they're about ten feet by ten feet. It's two two large doors. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as yeah, as soon as like we go in and see the ceilings, I'd kind of take take a look back at the door. See how large uh, the actual door. Um, roll me an intelligence check. As someone who slept in barns for as long as you have, you know, as many times as you have over your young life, yeah, you feel like this was probably at some point just a very large barn that was converted. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, yep. Inside, downstairs, is there is a set of staircases going up, one on each side, one on the left, one on the right. Up, up, go upstairs. Uh, in the la center of the room is a large open area. What for? You're not quite sure, but in front of that is a bar. And then over by, on each, on the left and right sides of the room are a mixture of circular, square, rectangular tables. Are there any booths? There are no booths, it's just tables. Um, there are a couple, like, bar stools sitting along the wall. Um... And then, of course, there's the large centralized bar. Uh, is there anyone awake? Uh, currently, there is a woman sitting at the bar, kind of <laughs> reading a book. Um, there are three very large chandeliers hanging from the ceiling, but they're not like chandeliers in that, you know, super nice. They are large iron rot circular almost like wagon wheels turned on their sides that hold mm -hmm. candles mm -hmm. and that is what is providing light throughout the, the larger portion of this chamber um, although she does have a singular candle sitting on the bar by which she is reading a book look at all familiar um no she just looks like um you know human male or human female uh long brown hair um Pale white skin, some freckles, it looks like, perhaps. But no, she does not look familiar. And she's on, she's behind the bar, or she's in front of the bar, sitting at the bar? She is behind the bar. Ah, ah, all right. <clears throat> yep. So does she take any notice as we walk in? Uh, Do you even look up from her book? To... Nope. <laughs> Good morning. Do you, do you walk up to the bar to say Yeah, this? of course. Okay, so you walk up to the bar and you go, good morning, and she suddenly snaps out of it. Like, jumps a bit and goes, oh. Uh, sorry, I appear to have dozed off. Um, Hi, how, how can I? What time is it? It's still... And she looks out what appears to be like a window off the way. It's still dark out. Um... Uh, how can I be of service? Welcome to Terran's Rest. Yeah, we uh, we were kind of traveling all night, and uh, we were just looking to kind of get some breakfast and some coffee, maybe, and just kind of settle ourselves before we uh, decided what our next course of action was. See her kind of looking at, she's like gauging her candle to like kind of try and get a gauge of how long it's been burning. She's like, um, sorry, but breakfast isn't for another couple hours. Um, you're more than welcome to uh, relax at a table. I can get you any, you know, some water or whatever you would like to have. Bars open. Uh, I just won't start start cooking for another couple hours. You have any rooms available? Uh, Yes, I have two available currently. Do we, uh, and I'll just turn and turn and address everybody. So what do we want to do? Do we want to sit and have a couple of drinks or do we want to get some rooms and just kind of kick back for a couple hours until breakfast? What are, what are we thinking? How long have we been traveling? 16 hours. 16 hours. You've been flying on horseback for 16 hours. Yeah. Now we've had a full night's rest. Good. Room? <laughs> you don't Wait need for to breakfast. Sleep. You don't need to sleep. Willick, we don't need to sleep. <laughs> we can stay down here. But I like it. 
Yeah. Well, Emerson. Yeah, I was going to suggest if you'd like, if if you don't need to sleep anyway, then if you want to uh, stay down and maybe uh, just be around, you'll get noticed. I'm sure if uh, the lady's got any emissaries. Right. Yeah. All right. Do we want to ask after the people that we're meeting? <clears throat> Uh, I have a feeling that if we spend a meal down here in this establishment for the morning, that uh, very likely that they'll find out. Uh, we're on the clock, though. Right. And breakfast is only two hours away. Uh, two is a twelfth of what we have available. All right. All right. <clears throat> uh, pardon me, miss. I didn't catch your name. Oh, uh, my name is uh, Jalinda. Oh, Jalinda. All right. Well met. Uh, my name is Rowan. Uh, we'd kindly take a couple, uh, a couple of rooms, if you don't mind. Uh, I'm sure one or two of our number may uh, bother you for the, the bar a little bit here. But um, if you don't mind my asking... Have there been another sort of larger group of retinue that have kind of arrived here that uh, may already be present? Um, there is some kind of traveling troop that took three of my rooms. Oh, yeah. When did they arrive? Mm, just earlier tonight. That sounds good. I sounds guess, good. I guess that's yesterday now. But yes, so last night. All right. They, just before uh, dinner time. Did they make mention that they'd be around for breakfast? Uh, yeah, I believe they're planning to eat breakfast before heading on. Perfect. Well, that'll do kindly then. I'll take two of your rooms if you don't mind. Oh, you said, sure. Uh, that'll be a total of six gold for one night each. No problem. I pay the lady kindly, and I'll slip her another two gold for her information. Hmm. One of those sorts, are you? She slides the gold over to herself. <laughs> Look, I always like to now, help the people that help me. What can I say? She's like, now, I warn you, don't go making trouble in here. Oh, no, not well, at all. It's the last thing that we want to do. Absolutely. Uh, she she no. reaches under the, the counter, and you hear like an audible click, and she goes, I don't like trouble. We don't like trouble either. We're actually... Uh, we're actually here to meet some people so that we can stop some trouble some way. We're actually in the business of stopping trouble. Okay. Well, just don't cause trouble. Don't bring trouble here. That's all I ask. Raise my hands politely. Scoop the keys off the table. <laughs> bow. <laughs> and make my way up the stairs. <laughs> okay. All right. I will flip a key to Tahani, since I know she has excellent reflexes. And okay. I will head upstairs. All right. So who all is going to go try and take a nap for a couple hours? Me. Tahani. Rowan. Me. Sure. I, don't, I don't think I will nap, but I do want to stretch out. Okay. Wants to relax. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that leaves Corin and Emmers downstairs. Uh, and what's no, Gex I'm doing? Also going to go. Okay, uh, Gex goes up with Tahani. Okay. I think Corin, Corin, what you're going to? I am also <laughs> going upstairs. For okay, so it's like just Emmers. Just Emmers. Trouble downstairs. <laughs> I can't. I can't do anything about it. I need to sleep. I'll make good decisions. I will literally say that as I'm going up the stairs. Emrys, you heard the kind of establishment. Make good decisions. <laughs> I'll go upstairs. <laughs> I'll make good decisions. We all need what would Rowan do bracelets. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They go upstairs. Um, that leaves you downstairs alone with Jolinda, who's gone back to reading her book. Cool. Are you going to do anything? Ask for anything? Yeah, I want a drink. Okay. What do you have at this establishment, Jalinda? I have <laughs> wines, all sorts of ales. I have some harder liquors if you would like. I have water. Um, I think I have some goat's milk still that should be good. Um, 
I'll have some ale. Perfect. Um, I have quite a few types. Uh, so do you have a particular taste? No. What's your strongest? Um, <laughs> yep. That would be the stone bruise. And goes over. <laughs> okay. She can't do the hard liquor right now. Because cool, it is a bit early. It is. Um, I have to wait till at least nine. You, so. you hear a, a, her pouring out of a keg that's under the bar. She comes back up. Here you go. Thank you, my lady. Nope. No I'm problem. trying to be like Rowan, okay? No, By know. the way, buying the stone brew is a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> it was one that Rowan would absolutely approve of. <laughs> I'm like awkwardly like, thank you, my lady. You have very beautiful eyes. Um. <laughs> Thank you, I think. You have very interesting eyes. Thank you. Cheers. 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 She, like, raises an invisible mug. <laughs> like, cheers. What might I say are you reading, my <laughs> lady? <laughs> One. She looks at you and she goes, oh, um... She puts it down, looks a little, maybe slightly embarrassed. It's reading mommy porn. <laughs> Are you reading salacious material? In indeed I am. That is the best material. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Oh. Cheers. And she raises her book. Roll a perception check. Okay. Sees all. I see all. <laughs> oh, yep, you sure do. Uh, so the book title is Two Star Night. Okay. Two Star Night. The author's name is familiar to you. To me. Fizzle Puck. <laughs> As is it, it says, Fizzle Puck, the mystical magnificent. Oh. <laughs> I believe I know the author of your book, Fair One. She goes. The author? Yes. This book is quite old. Are you sure? I mean, he's very unusual, so probably. Hmm. Let's roll the sense motive, even though you're not. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Very interesting. You and your uh, compatriots seem to be sort of travelers. Um, we are sort of travelers, yes. Yeah. You all. Armed and armored. Assume yes, some sort of group of most goodly sell swords or adventurers or something of of that nature. Something like that. She goes, you know, <sighs> it's what my father did before he established this inn. Who is your father, fair one? Please tell of your two stories <laughs> and family. I love stories. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Where exactly are you from? Your accent. I... Quite unnatural. <laughs> Thank you. I am quite unnatural sometimes. <laughs> oh, I'm broken. Please tell me of your stories and family. Well, um, my father, uh, Parlo Terran, uh, is a sort of half elven adventurer who hailed from. Um, a nation a far bit away uh, by the name of Arisia. Um Towards the his middle age, he decided to settle down and, um, well, he uh, established a small inn here. Uh, uh, originally over where the house is now is where the original inn was. This was a very large barn that he bought and then um, turned into the in some time after that, uh, while I was young, um, and we've been here since. Uh, us and the barkeep. Well, that sounds great. What is um, when is the barkeep coming? Um, I love to meet new and interesting people. I think money will be here. He's he's usually here shortly before dawn, so probably another half hour or so would be my estimate. Quite right. Money? Cheers! Yeah, 
money. I, I don't know. You're not there to hear the name. But yes, money. <laughs> but yes, just in case. Okay. So. Wonderful. Cheers. Che- cheers. Cheers. <laughs> If you need anything else, call for me. I'm going to go do some, uh, well, now that there's much more mouths to feed for breakfast, I should do some additional uh, prep. I will. Thank you. So I'll just be, just be in the kitchen right right back there. Lovely. <laughs> just like running away. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. All right. So you drink your ale. Uh, do you I make it last? Do you make it last, or do you just drink it? No, I drink it like I drink all liquids. So <laughs> real fucking fast. Got yes. it. Yes. <laughs> so ten minutes later, the ale is gone. Um, you just hang out. Yeah, is there like, it's it does look like like a living room, like kind of vibe. Uh no, it's a lot of tables. A lot of tables. Kind of. Yeah, a lot of, and it looks like none of them are necess- It's not like they were all crafted at the same time to go to the same establishment. It looks like they've just been bought at various sales and from other people, or inherited, or left behind, or found in you know refuse piles or whatever. Okay. Yeah, I just hang out. Okay. Watch the door. So you're watching the door. Make a perception roll. Make a perception roll. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you're watching the door, and it's not the door that catches your attention. It is the sound of sliding wood coming from the wall to your left. That would be this di- no, this direction. Um, okay. And. You turn and look, and you watch as the wall is sliding. As you realize that it's not just a wall, it is a very, very, very big door. Oh, cool. That is now sliding open. <clears throat> and you can see that there is a very large figure carrying a little tiny lantern. That kind of like casts a shadow over his very enormous form. Mm-hmm. He slowly walks in, turns, and then slowly closes what you now realize is the old barn door. Barn door. He closes it shut. Okay. And then he turns and starts walking in. Uh, this individual uh, is probably only mm, five feet shorter than the ceiling. So he's about 15 feet tall. Whoa. Um, you have seen an individual that looks similar to this, not the same one, but you you, ha- you guys, while it, on your journey together, have run into a giant before. I remember Tahani tried to help him, and he was like, nah. Yep, <laughs> this is another hill giant. Oh. So he comes in. <clears throat> um, he's wearing overalls. That look haphazardly crafted. Um, it looks like that it's made through lots of human-sized clothing stitched together. So there's just like shirts and pants and stuff all stitched together to make these overalls that are huge. That are like mm-hmm. these, this enormous pair that he's wearing. Uh, very big beer belly. Um, sort of graying-looking beard on his face. Completely bald head with these like three tattooed lines running from the back to the front. Mm-hmm. He walks over slowly to the bar. He correct. He moves a couple chairs, which where they belong amongst the tables as he goes. And then he glances over at you, sees you sitting there, looks down at your cup, looks back at you, and goes, "You want another?" Yes, good sir. Well met. Hello. I will get you more beer. Thank you. Cheers. You're welcome. No problem. Walks over. Reaches down with 
index finger and thumb and picks up your pint and turns around and walks back to the bar. Leans over it. Just leans over it. Doesn't even go behind the bar. <laughs> pours it and turns around and comes back and sits it down on the table. Thank you. He goes, you have room here. Uh, technically, yes. I came with a band of friends. Technically is a big word. It is. <laughs> Are you money? Uh, yes, I am money. Jolinda is... mentioned that she would be here. Oh, is Jolinda here? She's where making she, food. Where'd she go? Is she hiding? Oh, she's in the kitchen. Okay. Yes, because there's a lot of customers, because we came in. Oh, there's more of you. Yes, they're upstairs in the rooms taking naps. Good for business. Good for business. Yes, amazing. Did you sleep well, sir? Um, mostly. That's good. Do you, Where uh, are you, you slept from? well. You are up quite early. Yes. I, I am from. I am from here. You just kind from of here. motions broadly with his hands. So you've lived here at the inn? Uh, yeah, I've lived here at inn for, uh, uh, um, he starts, like, counting, he goes, many years. Many years. So, did you know Delinda's father? Oh, yes. Porlo hired me. Porlo hired you. Yes. I'm, I have very good taste for ale. Nice. Drink lots. We do as well on occasion. Wonderful. I will have drink with you. Yes. Cheers. <clears throat> you see him walk over to a corner. It has like a mop and a bucket and stuff in it. And there's also a large barrel there. He just picks up the barrel and goes over. You hear him. He turns around and just looks at you and leans on the bar. You can hear what sounds like liquid pouring. Mm -hmm. You have to wait like five minutes as his drink <laughs> pours. Why didn't you just drink it out of the barrel? It was, it's, uh, yeah, it's not proper. You don't drink from uh, mm. you know, container that the goat's milk comes in, do you? You don't drink straight from there. You pour two glass first. I used I to drink so. straight. I used to drink straight from keg. And got Parlo very, very angry. Oh. Have to do things proper way. Wow, you are a giant with manners. <laughs> I am trying. I've been trying for many years. Well, Wasn't many job. years. <laughs> many years. Wasn't always. Mannerful. I am not mannerful a lot of the time. You seem to have quite good manners. I'm trying. Cheers! Cheers to <laughs> trying as he like pulls up the this giant. It looks not like a, a like a full on barrel, but it's pretty close. To doing our best. And he, he just goes and like slams it into your your cup. Squ spills a little bit of your ale and he goes, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. And he like it's grabs, okay. he grabs your, like your hand and stuff in his and then slowly tips his barrel and pours a little bit more out of his into the back into yours. Aww. To replace Thank what he sloshed. You. You're welcome. And he drinks out of his. Okay. I assume we're talking loudly. Doesn't Jalinda hear us? Uh... Yeah, I mean, you guys are relatively loud. Uh, not loud, but, like, you're not keeping quiet. Yeah, no way. So, but yeah, so she does come out eventually, but, like, you and Mungok have a brief bit of, like, nice conversation. Like, you ask where, uh, how his sleep was, so he explains to you that uh, it was a good sleep, except his mattress is lumpy, because uh, he forgot to take, uh, like, one of inside his mattress was all the wool 
Uh, except he forgot uh, to take the wool off of one of the sheep's first. Oh. <laughs> so there was a big lump in his mattress. So there's a sheep in your mattress? <laughs> there was a sheep in his mattress. What happened to the sheep? Well, I laid on it. <laughs> I laid on it. <laughs> that would make a really nice mutton. Very lean. <laughs> so I can go get it for you if we would like for breakfast. I mean, I only you don't live want it to over go to there. <laughs> Gus, mm. you probably don't want it. It's mm. very leaky. Okay, then. That's fine. <laughs> okay. So eventually, Jalinda comes back in. Mm -hmm. She's like, money! You see her, like, come around the bar and give him, like, a hug, which is very strange to see this hulking form reach over and give her give this human woman a hug. But he does. He goes, good morning, Jalinda. How, how, how was last night? I hope you didn't I, you know, I'm I am here now. Uh, so as soon as breakfast is done, you can go and take your nap. She goes, oh, well, there's going to be um, it's uh, it'll be the first time the inn will have been full in, uh, you know, a few months. So it'll be a little bit busier this morning. Yes. Busy. busy is good. Busy means business. I love when you talk to yourself, Jason. I know. <laughs> so she goes, well I will uh, go and continue on now that I know you're here for sure um, we have one patron with us so far as you see I'm sure the others will be down once they start smelling food cheers cheers and she lifts up like a cutting knife like a, a butcher's knife and turns around and Shakes her head and walks back into the You've kitchen. You've been most accommodating, Jolinda. Thank you, my fair maiden. Mo <laughs> Money looks at you and goes, she's great. She. Yes. You know, I knew her when she was little tiny baby. Really? Yes, I was there when her mother had her. Um. Yes. You've lived a full life, Money. Uh, yeah. Yes, I am 133. Wow! That's what uh, Jalinda keeps track from me. That's very nice of her. I can't count that high. <laughs> That's just... okay. You do your best. Yes, I do. I only have 19 digits. You're missing one? Yes, my little baby toe. And he reaches down and he pulls up his foot that you now notice he's not wearing boots or anything. It's just his bare feet. Which is kind of gross, but he pulls up this giant meaty foot and with odd grace, like, is just standing there holding his foot in front of you so you can see that his pinky toe, which is probably, you know, um, the size of, like, your fist is just missing. Well, Looks like there is a scar there where you know it would have been connected, but how did that happen? Dragon. A just dragon. Shrugs, just shrugs. Yes, little annoying green thing in the forest. It was is little. Dead. <laughs> it was um. It was smaller than me. Okay. Bigger than you. I, I would. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. I crush its face. That's awesome. It's my toe. I crush its face. Oh, do you? Yes, do with you? this. Oh, that is very normal sized hammer. <laughs> <laughs> For us smaller folk, it is quite large. That is true. I. It is impressive that you can wield such a weapon. It is impressive. I know. Uh, I once knew a man who could wield very, very big sword, which is like normal sword for me. Kind really? of more like more like dagger, but I not tell him that. 
he might get upset. Who was that? Uh, Ash. 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 Ash? Ash. That's it? I don't remember the rest of his name. That's okay. Ash. It was a long time ago before I really cared about people. Ah. Well, I also have a friend that wields another hammer, but it's smaller than mine, but he's very strong as well. Oh, well, I will not make fun of him for having small hammer. Uh, yeah, you don't need to. Okay, good. I don't do that because I'm a nice person. You are nice, honey. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, yep, the wafting of and telltale sizzling just begins to come from the kitchen as the ever-present scent of bacon enters your nostrils. Yes, bacon. <laughs> bacon. Um, so, among... It smells like food. I'm going to go... I'm going to bring Bron yep. downstairs. Yep, it is just, you know, in the morning. Um... Yeah, so Runt is normal sized again in your room. And doesn't look like a bear, looks like Runt. Uh, yeah. And that that's a thing. I don't know how big the rooms are. It's big enough for Runt. Okay. Because there's yep. Runt, Willick, Corin, and me. All in that. Yep, you can all fit in there. Runt <laughs> is just kind of wedged in between the two beds. Okay. Well, time to pull the band-aid off. Yeah. We got here without much of an episode, and that's good enough for me. We're going downstairs. All right. I'll get myself together. I'll see you down there. Okay. <clears throat> so, you get you get ready and you go down. You find Emrys, who's sitting at a table. Yes! That's what we're doing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Her. She's, and she's she's talking to an individual at the who's behind the bar now uh a massive giant man because it is a giant you come down and you see money for the first time i'm gonna go to the bar okay is Runt with you? Like, did yes. he Runt follow you? Yep. Okay. Is it Runt Runt? It's Runt Runt, right? It's Runt Runt. Yeah. Full on yeah. Runt Runt. So roll me a perception check, Emrys. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Okay, you notice Corrin coming down the stairs with Runt. You don't really notice Corrin, it's more like you hear Runt coming down the stairs. Okay. Although, uh, Corn, you do notice that these steps are very sturdy. So, Runt doesn't really make too much noise coming down them. But you come down, and like I said, you see this giant standing behind the bar. Uh, who, we're headed to the bar. Who turns as you guys head to the bar and looks at you and goes, Greetings, and looks behind you and sees Runt and goes, That's runt money. It is money. No, that's that's tiny. What? I I can no, assure that's... you that this is not in fact tiny. No, this tiny is runt. Is the runt. owl bear, tiny tiny owl bear. No, this is runt. This is a, another one. Yes. Yeah. There's more. More. About 22 more. That's more than I have digits. He has 19. That is, that is more than you have digits. Uh, would it be possible... I, I don't know if uh, meals are included with our rooms or anything like that. Would it be possible for us to get uh, more... Oh, you need for, meal for, for your for your uh, runt. You need meal yeah, for yeah. runt. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, I I have, I have a perfect sheep. Feel <laughs> Does he like sheep? Yes. We found a use for the sheep money. Yes, this is a great day. I will be back in a few minutes. Just <laughs> wait here. Did you see money like peeking? Jolinda, I'll be back in a few minutes. I have to go get something from home. She's like, what? It's your shift. What are you? I, it, there's only two people out here now. It's okay. Also, there's an owl bear. <laughs> <laughs> she goes. Mungok, did you just say owl bear? <laughs> and she peeks her head out and looks and goes. You see her, like, her face immediately go to, like, amazement and then fright, and then she slowly, like, backs away in the doorway. Nice! With the, like, well, she's not, now she's holding a spoon, and she's like, um... Oh, that's... Mongo goes, it's fine, he seems, the owl bitter seems very well behaved. He's, he hasn't bitten anybody yet, it'll be fine. <laughs> Is there, like, As... a fireplace somewhere? Uh, no, there's no fireplace here, unfortunately. Uh, he's like, however, I can, if you would like, I could move some tables before I go, so there's plenty of room for Runt to sit. Yeah, I just want to make sure he's not in here. the way of the rest we, of the uh, Oh, no problem. We put him here, over here in the corner. He walks over to a cor the corner that, like, that's near the bar area and kind of near where Emerus is currently sitting. He moves a couple tables and stuff out of the way. Uh, looks like some cleaning supplies. He moves out of the way. Perfect. There's a we'll open air area. He's very well behaved. Good, good, good. I will go get his breakfast. I'll be back very soon. And then you see Mungok walk across the room, not to the door you entered, and then start sliding the wall open. That's a new trick. <laughs> It's a barn door. That, that's when you realize that the wall is actually a barn door. Like a, a false wall was put over the barn door. And he, the old barn door. And he walks out, closes it, and then it's just you, Emerson, Runt now. Runt! You're Runt again! He's Runt again. Yes. Runt, like, looks at you. Just looks at you. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> I'll, Eventually, uh, you'll be my friend. Right? That's a thought we need to say. Uh huh. I'll I'll make sure that uh, Corin gets up. Uh, sorry that um. You no, know, see what I did there. I had the Freudian slip. Willick gets up. Willick, time to get yeah. up. Breakfast. Oh, I wasn't really sleeping. Yeah, so you notice that Willick wasn't really sleeping. Like he knows. <laughs> He's just like we just, trying to make just sure waiting for me to make sure that everybody else had a chance first. All right, all right. Well, listen, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go downstairs. You should come along. We'll uh, knock on Tahani's door on the way down. Let's do it. All right. As we go by, we'll just like knock, knock, knock. knock. Okay. Hello. Yeah, we're going downstairs. All right, we'll be right down. All right. And uh, uh, you know, uh Tati, when you wake up, Gex is like sitting on their bed <gasps> with a book laying in their lap and just kind of reading from it. Did you sleep at all? Yes. Okay. He goes back to reading. What are you reading? My spell book. Right, right. All right. Let's go downstairs and get some breakfast. Um, I'll uh, go ahead. I'll be down shortly. All right. I need to finish my preparations. Just, just a reminder: Willick is already downstairs. Right. No, I'll, I'll be okay. All right. <laughs> nice. Go downstairs. Okay. You go downstairs. Uh, you find Emrys. Corin and Runt. Actual Runt. Downstairs. Ooh. Along with uh, Rowan and Willick. Yeah, we're all, we'll sit down at the table. Everybody's, yeah, everybody's kind of gathering yeah. around the table that Emmers is at. So, how'd you how'd your couple hours go? Good. Quite well. 
What? I don't know how you talk like this all the time. <laughs> or talk to people in general. <laughs> but I tried my best. Can I, can I look at the mug? <laughs> I gotta look down at her mug. Is is she there is. is there anything in it's it? It's most it's mostly gone. There's still a little bit left, but it's mostly gone. Uh, am I able to recognize what it is? Um. Yeah. 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 And I'll just kind of look at Emerson. Wow. You were it's into not the, the darkest. It's not the darkest one. You were into the cool. stone brews last night, weren't you? If you think I'm inebriated, you don't know me very well, Rowan. I was trying to do what you told me. I was trying to make good decisions. Go! Well, and I made a very good friend. I'll look around and I'll realize that nothing's broken. Yeah, nobody's well, it looks exactly like you left it, except no, nobody's a dead. Tables are moved, and <laughs> once laying in the corner. That's it. So, uh, where is uh, Jalinda? She she's in the back? Preparing. Yeah, she's in the back. Yeah. I'm not sure she's thrilled that Rump's here. Money went to go get Rump some food. He did. Oh, you met Money? What's he I like? Did. He did. is very tall. Like how oh. tall? Like, and I'll very point at the 20 tall. foot ceiling. Big. Like, very tall. You'll see. He has 19 digits. He does. I wonder which one's missing. <laughs> uh, he also. He, he knew about Tiny's ancestry. He thought Ron was Tiny. Ancestry. How old is this money? 130, I think he said. How do you know that? <laughs> because we're friends, He's Rowan. very friendly. Wow. You told me to make, to make good decisions. Emrys, I am proud of you. <laughs> Thank did you. you. Did you kill anyone? No, not yet. <laughs> but I'm getting empty. But me and money like to crush things. So it could get interesting. Speaking of money and crush things, the wall begins to slide open. Ooh, money. For back. those of you who have not seen this yet, the wall begins to slide open. Like, <laughs> like move back a little bit in my chair. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. As a hill giant wearing overalls made out of normal people clothes stitched together comes in carrying this poor squished sheep <laughs> that's the sheep with like he, he's holding it like with a bucket underneath as it's still kind of dripping blood out of it <laughs> did say it was dripping yep he said it was leaking sets it in the bucket kind of up against the wall like makes sure it stays put and then closes the door and then picks it back up and brings it over and he doesn't even, like, bring it straight to you, Corn. He just takes it right over to Runt and just sets it down. Like he's fed owlbears one or two times in his lifetime. That is exactly <laughs> what Corn notices. Like, this is something that money has done before. Rowan, uh, this is money. <laughs> oh, oh, there's... There's more of you awake. Wonderful. I am money. I can provide you with whatever drinks you want. And if you get too rowdy, I throw you outside on your face. <laughs> I bet you would. Hi, money. I'm Rowan. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Would you uh, like a drink? I'll have what she's having. Oh. Oh. Um. I drank the rest of that one. <laughs> Got anything darker? N not of stone brew. I have like uh, two steps lighter, <laughs> which is like the medium, the middle of the road. It's breakfast. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Reaches over the bar just like he did for Emerson. Just you see him like leaning over, his ass up in the air. <laughs> Rowan just like stares back at at Emrys with like this crazy disbelief in his eyes. Like, is this really happening right now? Is this how this goes? And I'm just like, wow. Okay. <laughs> Look back. Okay. And comes when over he... and like gingerly sets it down in front of you. So, money. Yes. It looks to me like you've fed a large creature once or twice. 
Uh, I have fed owl bear before. I have fed tiny. Mm. <laughs> you fed many tiny. times. Many tiny, times. yes, many times. You knew tiny. Yes, I do tiny very well. I helped take care of tiny for a while. You know, fed him, washed him, wrestled with him, bit him <laughs> when he bit me. <laughs> <laughs> Know anyone knew Tiny? Who's who? Oh, How was Tiny? Oh, he was uh, the um, very not tiny. <laughs> <laughs> like, like how not tiny? Like he was. Runt is is big, but Tiny was very big, and like you see, like. His hands expand past to the point where his shoulders are. Oh my god. He goes, he goes, have you ever seen... Hold on, I gotta look at uh, this. Uh, there we go. Julinda is a fan of Fizzlepuff's books, everyone. You're kidding. That's what she was reading? Mm-hmm. Have, have you was... ever been to Drelev? I don't think so. You have. You it's have. uh yeah, you, it's a fort slash city. It's on the easternmost border of the Summerlands. It's it's on the direct trade route to Pitax itself. Sure. Uh, it's, goes, it's been a while, but I have. He goes, so you, you know there that there is a very large statue of Tiny. Yes. Yes. That statue is accurate size. Oh. Uh, if that is correct, if, mo if money is not lying to you, that means Tiny was almost 20 feet tall. <laughs> From foot other. to back, almost 20 feet tall. Wow. That's a big bird. <laughs> wow. Wow, whoever whoever raised him must have uh, really loved him, huh? Ron, I told you, you gotta eat more fruits and stop taking naps. <laughs> it, you, you hear money go, yes, fruit is key to getting that big. Uh, you have to get uh, fairy fruit. Fairy fruit. Fairy fruit. Hmm? How do you get fairy fruit? I don't know. I we got it from. Uh, I don't know. They just gave it to me. Do you remember what it looked like? Uh, yes, it was like very big. Uh, looked like kind of like big apple, but you know how strawberries have like little green stuff on top. Yep. Like a red apple with that on top. Okay. Big. Something like a strawberry, something like an apple. But All soft, right. but soft like orange. Soft. <laughs> okay. Fairy fruit. Got it. Did you eat it like a banana? Like I <laughs> Good. No, you don't eat like banana. You have to cut open like pineapple. Oh. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Love it. Who gave you the fruit? Oh, Ash, uh, Keegan, Korik, uh, Kale. So you knew the founders of the Summerlands? Yes, I was here when they, when the, before it was the Summerlands. I told ah. you was old. I, I am, I am 133. You are in... What shape for 133? Uh, if, if I lived to be like other hill giants, I'd be about 200 years old when I die. Well, man. Well, money, you are, uh, you are a welcome addition to this morning, let me tell you what. <laughs> I will cheers, Emrys. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> Hear money go, cheers! <laughs> behind the bar, 
pulls out the barrel. Big barrel that kind of just like. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Willick, make a reflex save. <laughs> oh no. I don't know. Okay. You are quick enough to not have a beer shower this morning. <laughs> As money raises his barrel to toast and a bunch of ale sloshes out of it. it immediately goes, oh, I am so sorry. I apologize. Your meal will be on the house. Really? <laughs> uh, money. Oh, yeah, I even bought, I even money. I yes. Money. <laughs> uh, listen, we only just met, but um, even I know when a, a, a bad idea is just a terrible one. And uh, as much as my friend here could probably put away of that barrel that you're holding, and still walk out of here. I'm afraid my friend here might actually eat you out of house and home. He might rival your appetite. Do you have any more sheep? He's just like, you see Money's face kind of twist a little bit, and he goes, is that a challenge? Oh! Oh! I like turn over, <laughs> like <laughs> slowly turn to Willick. Is it Willick? All right, Willick. The challenge? So listen, um, if you are prepared to go head to head on an eaten challenge with a giant, then I am one hundred percent prepared to let him put your meal on the house. <laughs> but the last time that you had an eating challenge, <laughs> that didn't that fare was so well. What's wrong with that pie? Well, <laughs> I'm just saying, make good decisions. Make good decision! <laughs> and then I'll back away and I'll wait. What do you have? Well, what do you mean? Whatever Jillian does is cookie. Is it pie? Uh, I don't do well with pies. He's like, it smells like bacon, eggs, probably mixed gross vegetables. Uh, bread, cheese. I it all sounds wonderful. I smell apple butter. Ooh. I like it. It's also like, first. right? <laughs> Maybe we should ask Jolinda since she would be cooking a large amount of food. Oh, that's, you are very, you see, you have better manners than me. No challenge. It is okay. You are the better man today. Oh. oh. Money, this is my friend with the other hammer. Oh, how wonderful. Your your friend here, uh, Amris, tells me that she likes to smash things. I like to smash things. Apparently you like to smash things. I really like to smash things. You especially a, from far away. Great. Oh, from far away. Oh, you throw hammer. Is that yes. why it is smaller than her hammer? Yes, it is for flying. Flying and hammer. I understand now. <laughs> is there a window? There is a window. Oh, oh no! Is so it open? Much. Is it open? <laughs> no. Oops. It doesn't look like it opens in that manner. It's like a little small window up on. Uh, up yeah, on I'm. Wall. Yeah, I will like try to enter if I can. Yeah, you see, you obviously will like like going to like. Yeah. Go for his hammer as he's looking at the window. Like, yeah. You know what's going on. Yeah. Oh, uh, Willick, we were um told not to make trouble, at all. and I'd hate to think we can just go a window convey. Oh, no, don't, don't, Jalinda be very mad. That's very bad. We don't do that in here. Uh, we go outside and do it out there. There's plenty of things to break out there. But if y'all want to go outside, I mean, feel free. 
I mean, after breakfast. I do it all the time with people. She's not going to be mad if we're just throwing a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> after ba breakfast, the bacon smells good. Oh, see, you are a very smart man. <laughs> all right. Okay. Money. Uh, you all want breakfast? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, you have question. How? What? What would you like to know? You said you knew the founder. Uh, yes, I did. They, uh, they kicked my ass. Mm. They kicked your ass. Yeah, and then talk sense into me. Tell me I'd be a crazy man and stop being crazy man and to help. And so Munguk starts helping. What? Whatever happened to them? Uh, I don't know. I moved. They stayed in. Uh, summer home, and I moved here. Um, got a job at uh, Poro, and you know, get paid a lot, so I stay here. <laughs> so, last I knew, they were all at summer home. That was that was before whole Varnhold mess. I'll have to summer home. Got it. That, uh, that Von Hold mess must have been something. I was like, that's crazy time. A lot, I mean, good for business, though, but also not good for business. Like, prices inflated, but, you know, many people coming through, traveling, mostly trying to get out. Yeah, we, crazy, uh... Crazy times. We came through there, actually. Through... Old Von Hold. We, uh, we old, came through old, it. Oh, Old Von Hold. That place haunted. Why go there? Well, I mean, it's not haunted anymore. Oh, really? Yep. Hmm. Yeah, we, uh, we took care of that. Huh. Okay. I mean, yay, good job. <laughs> Hold his thumbs up to you. You are great warriors. Warriors? Do good do gooders. Good job. You do good. Kinda, yeah. When well, we can. We do good when we can. We make do when we can't. Uh anyway, I will go get your breakfast. It smells like enough is made for all of you. Even him. And he points <laughs> to Willick. He goes back and you see him go in through the kitchen door, it, which is more like he half leans into the kitchen from outside. <laughs> starts grabbing things. And you hear Jelani, like, Jelani go, Money, what are you doing? That's all of the food. Yes, my my, my friends, they're very hungry. They need the food. She's like, I... <laughs> and he just comes out of the door. You hear her just, like, cursing it a little bit, going back to making food. So he comes out with, like, three large trays just lined up on his arm. Just, like, like I said, a abnormal grace just turns around and walks over and just lays out the these giant platters of food to everybody. Ooh. Yep. So there is, like I said, there's bacon, there's eggs, there's a bunch of mixed vegetables that look like they were cooked on top of the, like, grill top. Um... Freshly, a couple loaves of freshly baked bread, a, a giant like round of cheese. Mm. There is a jar sitting in the center of of one of the trays that has, uh, like looks smells like apple butter. Yep. Yep. I'll have some bacon and I'll have some bread with some nice healthy helping of apple butter. The cheese on the side that sounds delicious. I can give Jasper bacon. Okay. Give Jasper a piece of bacon. <laughs> so, you guys eat your breakfast. Um, some people start coming downstairs. You guys don't recognize anybody that comes downstairs. Uh, a couple humans. Looks like three humans. Um, very brightly colored outfits. Huh. All right. 
Uh, they come out and they they're like walking and talking to each other. Um, does not sound like common. Okay. Doesn't sound like under common either, so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. From what you can tell, it's probably some regional dialect. Um, they're all brightly colored. Uh, they have like olive colored skin. Um, thick black hair that's kind of uh, tied multiple times down their back. And they all come down. They go over to money. Uh, say you know, tell them. Tell they tell money that they would like breakfast. He goes and gets it. Comes back and goes. Now don't don't get upset or scared or yell or scream. There is an owl bear in the corner. It's okay. It's nice. It will not attack you. Which they kind of go. I am sitting in the corner with Tiny. <laughs> yeah, and they go. Or with Ron. What? What in the world? What in the hell? Yeah. Yep. And then they like okay, and they take their food and go off to the complete opposite side of the building and sit and begin eating. And then more of them come down. And now, Rowan, you understand what was meant by traveling troop. Okay. Because it looks like these are all some form of performers. Circus folk? Uh, not necessarily circus folk. No, but, but like very familiar to what to, I... Uh, I... Yep, exactly. Just the way they're talking to each other and kind of goofing off and whatever in the morning. And like, uh, you know, one of them's like kind of juggling some things and stuff. Like, it's just, that's just the feeling you get immediately. <laughs> yeah. Makes me a little nostalgic. I'll kind of like... Kind of while I'm drinking my beer and looking at them, I'll kind of, kind of reach back and just kind of like rub the star knife on my back underneath my cloak a little. Yep. Long, a little bit wistfully for days when things were easy. Okay. So, you guys are, you know, eating breakfast and stuff. You guys are basically finished breakfast for the most part. Uh, the traveling troop it looks like there was a total of almost uh, 11 of them at one point um they eat their breakfast uh which they eat pretty rapidly and then they it seems like they head on like they leave oh, right. so it's back to just you guys um and like then you guys leave? it's it almost yeah they leave yeah like upstairs or just leave like uh no it looks like when they came downstairs they had whatever their belongings were with them okay now, Most okay. Really have too much. So as they start leaving, I'll actually get up. Is the window that we were talking about that the hammer almost went through at regular person eye level, no, or is you it would a... have to? It, it's like a like a high up barn window style. So you'd have to get like a stool or something to stand on to look out. If you um, to look I'm out not going to do. But what I will do is I'll kind of like just kind of follow. I'll follow them out like. 20, 15 seconds behind them, sort of situation. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious as to how they're. Do they have a wagon or something? Or are they just foot? Like, what are they... How are they okay. transporting? And what direction yep. are they headed? Okay. Uh, you come out, and you see what appears to be... It uh, looks like they've actually already pulled whatever their... Their two large caravan-style wagons. Okay. Uh, covered, you know, big round tops. Completely made out of wood. Uh, very much look like circus wagons. Yep. Um, but they have two of them that they all kind of pile into. Okay. Uh, and they actually start heading south. So that direction would be towards Dawn's Watch. Or, yeah, towards Dawn's Rise. Okay. Uh, am I able to catch up to them at all if I move very quickly? Uh, well... Their caravans are not being pulled by horses. They are being pulled by these large, woolly ox-looking creatures. That strikes me as though there's, like, a lot of weight inside of those things. Um, which seems, like, even more suspicious. So... Uh, roll a perception check. Uh, looking behind the wagons, they're leaving some definite tracks 
from the wheels. Right. And it's not like it's been raining all night or it's muddy or anything like that. Seems like your intuition is correct that the wagons are probably pretty weighed down. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, as I'm, I'll quickly stick my head in and be like, uh, to everyone, I'm like, uh, I'm chasing that wagon down and I'll just go. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chase the wagon. <laughs> I'm just going to go. Um, and I'll move as fast as I can. Are going. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. not at all surprised. Uh, I'll follow. How far away is it? By the time I would have stuck my head in and, and oh, come back I looked out. out, they were still just piling onto the wagons. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, so you don't have to go chasing anything. There are like only thirty or forty feet away from you. Oh, cool, gone. cool. And your speed is faster than their speed. Oh, okay, okay. I'll just yell out and be like, "Hey, hey, hello, hello, oh, hold up." So the back one, the the rear wagon, kind of stops as like two of the people pop around and look back at you. And as I'm walking up, I'll make sure that I'm kind of like, make sure my. Uh, I'm ready to kind of get the the lie detector out, and okay. just be like, "Oh hi, um, listen, I'm so sorry to stop you guys. You're obviously extremely busy, but I happen to see you guys over at uh, breakfast there inside uh inside the rest, and you just struck me as as a I really fond childhood memories. I spent a lot of my time wandering on the road in a troop just like yours, and I just thought I'd ask if you know, where have you been and and, uh, and where you're headed because I'm kind of pining after a good show because, like I said, I kind of was in one for a long time and missed the open road. Uh, so the one that's driving the wagon pokes his head towards him and goes, uh, well, uh, we're from Varicia. We are a Mortimer's traveling band of performers. Oh, are you Mortimer? Uh, I am not. No, Mortimer is driving the lead wagon. Uh, all right. And you said you're from, uh, uh you're Varicia. from Varicia? All right. Now that he says that, you're like, these are definitely, like, Varicians. Like, they look like yeah. native Varician. Yeah. Okay. You guys, uh... So where where are you headed? You're going uh, to oh sorry, you're going to Don's Raz. Who uh who hired you? Uh nobody. We just travel from city to city, uh ask if we can set up outside the city walls for a, you know, five to seven days and have a couple perf you know, performance each night for those who wish to attend and pay their entry fee and then make our way on to the next city. All right. We're kind of traveling south uh east across Galarian. Right. Across the, you know, they, so it sounds like from what he's saying is that they started at, up in the corner in Varicia and then have been slowly traveling southeast yeah. in a diagonal across the inner sea region. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, at this point in time, you guys would obviously see me just sitting there talking to your wagon. Um, so uh, if you don't mind my asking, like I said, I, I've done a lot of this traveling myself. You guys must have something pretty special planned for uh, for your Don's Rise visit. Because it looks like your, your wagon's leaving some pretty heavy tracks there. You must be carrying a really strong, heavy load. Yes. The animals are quite heavy. Animals? Yes. What kind of animals you got back there? Yes. I don't believe. I don't think you'd believe me if I told you. Try me. You can point behind him at. Yeah, yeah. I'll just kind of like motion. You know, we were sitting with an owl bear, oh, right? Is that is that with you? Yeah, yeah. Try me. Amazing. I. It's the first time I've ever seen one in person, and okay. I have seen quite a number of other circus performers. Yeah. What do you got back there? Can I take a look? Let's... I believe it's still sleeping. Sure. Um, there's like a, a little tease, a little snippet. Yeah. You're, if, you, uh, if you're heading south anytime soon, you should stop and see one of our shows. Yeah, we're here for a meeting, actually. Uh, and then we're heading meeting. south. Here. Right. Yeah. This little town? I uh, know. 
you know business some, is business exactly right so uh but yeah when i saw you guys i had to stop so so yeah so what what do you got what's in there and he's like well quick come on and he hops down and goes around to like a little looks like a little side window it looks mm-hmm. like it opens up and closes he unlatches it swings it open and then like steps down so you can step up and take a look inside okay i'll uh i'm like oh hold on a sec i i don't i don't see so well and I'll put on my spectacles, yeah. Yeah. and I'll slide down the detect magic. Okay. I'll look inside the wagon. Okay, nothing magical. Okay. Uh, but... However, what you see inside is, well, it's kind of dark um, okay. inside. So, but you can see, you can make out a very large form inside this wagon. It takes up most of the 15 by 15 foot ish room oh yep it is big it is like runt size big well if i can't see it i guess i'll just flick down the dark okay um looks like an elephant except it has fur no oh and i'll just like i'll kind of come out and i'll take a lens up i'll look at him (laughs) wow that's only one. You've got another one up there? Yeah, it's we have the mate. Wow. How did you find two? He's like set them free, Dottie. <coughs> He's like, oh, we were very lucky to uh well uh Mortimer uh um Used to travel and do odd jobs here and there for people and stuff uh, with another group of with a group of people, um, so he had quite a bit of money saved up. And then uh, we went north and well, we bought two. Wow. Oh. Well, I gotta tell you, you guys got any plan to mate them? That is indeed the plan. Are, the, are all the potential litter spoken for? Uh, I mean, the first is going to be ours. Right. Uh, after that, you know, who knows? I'm sure Mortimer would be interested in, you know, recouping some of that cost. You have been extremely helpful. If you'll pardon me just one moment, I'm going to go talk to Mortimer. I'm going to yell back at the crew. I assume you guys are all coming over. Guys, you got to see this! I'll like point inside. Okay. Then I'll shoot up to Mortimer. Okay. You go up front. Uh, Mortimer is, uh, you know, thin, lithe, but very tall, um, short, goatee and mustache, uh, slicked back black hair. As you approach, she's like, he, he, his wagon has already stopped as it seems like he's noticed that something is going on. Mm-hmm. He, come, he watches you. Like, you can see, you can tell that he's the leader because his clothes are slightly nicer than everybody else's. Okay. The real giveaway. Okay. When I'll, he was uh, sitting and eating, you had kind of pegged him for ringleader. Ringleader? Okay. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll throw on uh, my detect magic. As I'm walking up, I'll just, I can actually just cast detect magic as I'm walking um, to try to cast detect magic on his wagon. Okay, nothing glows on his wagon. Um, he does have a uh, magic cloak. That's fine. Okay. All right. Uh, good day, Mormo, is it? Uh, indeed it is. All right, my name's Rowan. Well met. I, uh, I stopped you, uh, you guys back there. I'm really sorry, but I actually spent a lot of my time wandering around with a, a, an establishment uh, just very much like yours in my youth, and... I kind of saw all the fun y'all were having around the breakfast table, and I'll be honest, I kind of started pining for more simpler days, you know? But I, I just had to ask. I mean, I, I noticed that you guys were carrying some really heavy loads, and so I asked because, you know, obviously I've seen these sort of before, and I I'm, I'm really hate to pry. I don't mean to hold you up, but, you know, I understand you guys are going south to Dawn's Rise. We're taking care of a little bit of business up here, and then we're headed back down ourselves, so I'm really anxious to kind of see your show, you know? Uh, but... Uh, one of your gentlemen were kind enough to share with me what you guys have going back there, your little secret, as it were. Yes. Oh, yep, I will handle that later. I apologize. Please don't be too rough I, on him. I can be I, quite charming. I, I know. Fine. 
uh, knowing that you are a well, at least were once a fellow performer. It's okay. It's a courtesy of the trade. Um, but you know. Well, listen. I, I again, I try to make it worth your while. Um, if you're interested, I understand you're trying to mate your two prize specimens. That is going. That was the uh, the plan. Yes, that is the plan. Uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, you know these things. Who knows? Has the second born been spoken for yet? Um, no, not really. I mean, I was going to keep any of the children for a you know, a few of them anyway, to expand our show. Um, but at some point, obviously, that's going to be uh, too much, so. Right. Well, I would be more than happy to take one off your hands um, if that's something that you were interested in. I mean, it might be something, I don't know. Damn it. Such a flattering face, too. I know, it is so good. Oh, there you're back. Okay, go again. What'd you say? Um, so, uh, he's like, Well, I don't know how long that's going to take. Um, I don't see it foresee it being anytime soon, but you know, uh, what was your name? Uh, my name's Rowan, Rowan Durant. Pleasure. Well, uh, wonderful to meet you, Rowan. Um, I will keep you in mind if I happen to decide that to uh, have one to sell. Um, do you reside here somewhere in the Summerlands? Uh, no, I've kind of been visiting, but uh, if I'm going to kind of plant any roots somewhere, this, uh, this seems like a nice quiet place, but I, I think I generally prefer the hustle and bustle of summer home proper. Uh, we have not been there yet. Uh, we just can kind of just following the roads as we go. But uh, summer home proper. So is that how? I mean, we don't really know this area. How big of a uh, city? It's, it's it's enormous. It's the capital city. It's the largest city in the entire summer lands. Oh well, that's wonderful to know. Um. Uh, we, we, we will have to see about going there it's, after Dawn's it's, Rise. It's perhaps. west of Dawn's Rise. Just, take, just follow the river. You, you can't miss it. Wonderful. Thank you for the information. Yes, absolutely. That's more than makes up for your sneak peek at our wonderful attraction. Excellent. So uh, just to stop here, or did you have any other business while you were in town? Uh, no, um, just stopped here. It just happened to be, you know, we were just traveling and found it on the way. And decided that sleeping in actual beds sounded wonderful compared to sleeping on the ground. Under the, I mean, under the ground under the stars is beautiful, don't get me wrong, but sometimes you want, you know, something a bit softer. That's where I'll choose to fire the detect lie. Okay. Doesn't appear to be lying. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Well, listen, Mortimer, it was a pleasure to meet you. And, uh, and like I said, it did my heart real good to, to see... You know, the craft's still at work, and applied so well, I might add. You, costumes are fantastic, and like I said, I, I can't wait costumes. to... Costumes. Well, the colors, you know what I'm saying. Oh, you you obviously have never been to Verissia. This is what we wear daily. Oh, I, I am so sorry. You're absolutely right. I have not been to Verissia. Oh, it's, trust me, it happens quite often. I'm from Verissia. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, don't let me interrupt you any further. I apologize. But listen, I look forward to seeing your show when we get back to Don's Rise after completing this here. That Definitely. Come by and see me. Come come ask for me personally, Rowan, and we'll give you the uh, friends and family discount. Fantastic. Uh, as you were. All right. Their laggins lurch and they go forwards. Yeah. So, inside. So, Run and Corrin came outside. Did anybody else go outside? No. Nope. No, I think I'm still sitting there. I do. Okay. okay. Willick went outside. All right. So, Tahani. Yeah. And Emrys. Yeah. The only two remaining at the table. Yep. Um, the Sylvan Queen walks down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Good decision! <laughs> She glances over at your table and goes, Ah, lovely. Glad to see you made it. 
and much faster than I would have predicted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my lady. We had we had some help. Well, that's good to know. Uh, but I'm... does your help know anything? No, uh, they're rocks now. Oh, uh, oh, okay. I see what you mean. You had magical means by which to get yourselves here. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. You see, behind her come down these two robed, indi like cloaked individuals following her. Um. So she comes over and takes a seat at your table. The rest of our party just stepped outside for a minute. I'm sure they'll be back. That is more than fine, as it leaves you two with me. And trust me, when the men are around, you can never get anything done. <laughs> Quite right, my lady! <laughs> so good. So good right now. So, uh, <clears throat> Mungok, dear, has everyone left? Oh, lady, you are awake. Good to see you. Come down. Thank you. Uh, yes, everybody is now gone. The, the Versians are, they have left. <clears throat> and uh, Jolinda is still in the back cooking. Uh, would you like breakfast? So where's Gex at this point? Uh, Gex has not come down from her room yet. Okay. From the room. Okay. Still not there. Okay. Um, so, uh, you see the Sylvan Queen look at Munguk and go, uh, no, Munguk, dear. I will just take a glass of wine, please. <laughs> Red, not white. So he comes over with this little, it's very interesting to watch Munguk put this little tiny wine glass down <laughs> in front of her. He manages to do it just perfectly. Like, click. There you go. And she's like, ah, oh, thank you, Munguk, dear. Come, come here. And she like leans over. She gives him a kiss on the cheek. Do you guys back. know each other? Oh, I have known Munguk for... <sighs> 133 oh, uh, years? Uh, no, I haven't known him since he was born. <laughs> and, um, I'd say probably somewhere in the 80 year range. I don't have an exact count. That's reasonable. But uh, ever since I really started visiting regularly. When did you start visiting regularly? Oh, uh... It was after the official founding of Summer Home, I believe. Their big ceremony they had. They had a big ceremony? Uh, yes, uh, a big celebration to really commemorate that uh, the Summerlands was its own official nation, uh, recognized by all the neighbors on all sides. Um, all sort of Threats had been eliminated and dealt with. Apparently. That sounds um, like quite a party. It it was. <laughs> <laughs> there is one thing the Summerlands knows how to do. It is party. That was 50 years ago? Much longer. She's like, um, uh, no, that was probably 82 years ago. Maybe so you I... must have known the founders, too. You could say I knew them quite well. How's that? I mean, I interacted with them on a regular basis. You're Eddie and I both, I mean, we are their neighbors to the to the west. <clears throat> so what do you want to talk about? <laughs> uh well of course the job. Yes, you were I mean going yeah. to uh, take okay, well 
Uh, so there are five sigils. Yep. She I'm down. In, she reaches in, she pulls out a little bag and sets it down on the table. She goes, here they are. I thought these things were huge. <laughs> Okay, cool. Now, goes, uh, inside you will find instructions on which one is which, uh, which order they need to be placed, and where they need to go. Are they written in common or kind of language that you understand? I would hope that one of you reads Elven. Elven? Nope. Uh, I'm going to say a negative. I'm going to say Negatabo. Ooh, wow, okay. Um, that. Um, she reaches in the bag, pulls out a piece of paper that was in the bag that is obviously much bigger than the bag she pulls it out of. Okay. Sets it down. Reaches into her, her own like little coat pocket type and pulls out a pen and a little bottle of ink and just starts... She goes, it's going to be in common, but do not let anybody get their hands on it. Okay. Now, um, have you heard of anything happening back at dawn? Uh, on what Friday? do you mean? Anything related to, um, prisoners or those in jail being hung? Uh, I did hear something about that this morning. Yes, apparently two members of Watch went missing. Oh my <laughs> lord. That was such a shame, don't you think? We were really sad to hear the news that two Watchmen were... Please don't try to lie to me. I, I was not lying. lying. I have been doing this for longer than you've been alive. <laughs> I'm not oh. trying to lie to you. <laughs> well, luckily for you, the Watch <laughs> believe that the missing Watch members are missing because they've been kidnapped by a criminal element in the city. Therefore, the people that they are currently hanging are <laughs> criminals. See, Tahani, I told you not to worry about anything. <sighs> We're fine. They're just criminals. See... They're taking innocent people and locking up innocent people, and it was a young boy whose parents were locked up in jail who had been forced to watch over us, which led to... Honey, I don't think she cares. I... The only thing I care about in, in the entirety of that is how did they know to have the little boy watch all of you? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, feel free to let Carlos know whenever he's <laughs> free to go back inside. Uh, yeah, I'm, well, I I keep talking about how long your conversation was outside and how long. Don't forget, they were way closer to the door than I was. That's all. That's why I was like Carlos, not me. I fuck it. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He hung me out to dry, and I fell for it. <laughs> Um, so, well, like I said, luckily they aren't on to you. I, I'm, again, I'm interested to know how they knew to have somebody tail you. Um, like I said, they're currently hanging criminals. I'm sure eventually they will move on to the, I, it, now you said everybody was innocent. Uh, as far as my understanding, that is not correct as they were arresting, uh, people for any form of crime. It just happens that the, they were throwing people in jail for minor things which they wouldn't normally be thrown in jail for. But then blackmailing um, the orphan children. Now, that is well assholic. <laughs> um, to be sure. Uh, but you know, you do, uh, do you know if the children, if the child's parents were innocent or were they criminals? Do you know this? Like, uh, the child apparently has been following you and watching you. He knows then how to do that, which would incline me to believe that his parentage is probably not the best. 
it's still an innocent child who was very distraught that his parents were taken away from him. Um, you, every child would be distraught typically when you take their parents away from them, whether they're a good child or a bad child. Yes, but you don't fault the... the you know, Mom! You know! The wrongdoings of the the parents on the kid. You don't know what the chi that child has ever done. What if that child is actually a murderer and you didn't know? That's right! Thanks, Emmer. <laughs> hey, sometimes you guys don't want to listen, so I just do what you're telling me to do, and you guys told me to do what I did, so... Oh, so... Good decision! Oh, she's like, oh, oh, they're dead, aren't they? I did not say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There, yes, you didn't have to. <laughs> Wonderful. Why, words did not come uh, out of my mouth. You tell okay. Rowan that they did not come out of my uh, mouth. So, <laughs> Corin. <laughs> Corin. Yep. You notice that, uh, like, it looks like, you know, uh, Rowan's conversation is probably not really anything in, of importance. Seems like it's, you know, he's, and it looks like he's finishing up his conversation with the guy at now at the first cart, not the not the closest one to you, but the one further away. As he's turned around and begun he heading back. So you're pretty sure you're safe to now head back inside. Alright, Bullock, are you gonna hang out with Rowan or you wanna go back in? I think I'm gonna hang out here and watch what Rowan's doing. Alright. This is kind of interesting. Goes wrong. Will do. Okay. okay. So you turn around and head inside. Runt following you. Yep. Uh, you come inside to see the Sylvan Queen sat at your table talking to Emrys and Tahani. Uh, her two guards flanking her, standing off behind her probably about ten feet. <clears throat> Alright. We're gonna go take a seat. Okay. You go take a seat. Um... Do you have Runt just go back to his corner? Uh, no, I have Runt come sit behind me. Okay. Runt comes over and sits behind you. And she kind of watches. You see her eyes, like, obviously watching Runt as her, like, the direction of her head hasn't really moved. She's just watching him from the side peripheral vision and watches him come and sits. And then she looks at you and goes, I thought you looked familiar. Well met. Greetings. From my estimations, that means you would be Rosemont. Uh, so I do not believe there is another halfling member of the Owlbear Guard. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, that would be Yeah, accurate. that is correct. Yep, you are the only halfling. There's a gnome, but you're the only halfling. Rosemont. Yeah, that's his last name. Oh, that's his last name. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Details, honey. Details. <laughs> she goes, well, this makes things much more interesting. It sure does. <clears throat> so, what are you doing with them? Well, uh, when they showed up on the doorstep of our keep with a crazy story about dark elves. The the captain C saw it fitting to send me along with them to try to gather proof and figure out what we would do next. Hmm. Does that mean now, that's where my grandson is? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. That's 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 actually that doesn't infuriate me. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Glad to hear that. Could be much worse places for him to be right now. Um well. Okay. So you're writing instructions down. Instructions. I it, it's finished. Yes. Okay. Why are we writing instructions down? For the sigils! Uh, so, the, that, as I was just telling your compatriots here, uh, although I guess they must be your wards, um, 
but the uh, instructions for which sigil is which, how they are to be placed, and where they are to be placed is all written down for you, along with the sigils in this wonderful little bag. Now, have my companions here told you about the complications? Uh, about... Uh, you mean the fact that uh, you have killed two members of the Dawn's Watch and now I did, they're... I did not say that. I... So, we... well, one member of the Dawn's Watch. There is saying and then there is telling, my dear. I didn't, I didn't tell them anything. You didn't say anything, but you told me everything. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. I mean, we had gotten through most of that. So, which complications are you referring to? So, one member of the Dawn's Watch was killed. And a Dark Elf. Oh, that? Okay. That, uh, yeah. The body of that Dark Elf was delivered to the captain of the Summer Guard. In Dawn's Rise, the General Wall Watch. Yeah. It's not General. It's, it is Captain. Was it Captain? It is Captain. Captain uh, Galinda Bilford. Bilford. Yep. Yeah, you're right. So, Sorry. Yep. Sure, you're right. Hmm. So, Bilford, uh, she's a stout woman, but I'm sure if you brought her obvious evidence that she would believe you. That's good. She's also trustworthy. So, I'm sure you'll understand that I'm in somewhat of a difficult situation here. There's... Um, in what sense? Uh, well, there's clear evidence. The Summer Guard has clear evidence that there are Dark Elves infiltrating the Dawn's Guard. The Dawn's Guard has been imprisoning people for minor offenses and is now hanging the people that they've imprisoned. Uh, yes, they are indeed hanging some prisoners. Um, as I just told your friends here, who apparently did weren't aware. Um, yeah, uh, the, they're currently hanging actual criminals, as they believe the missing watch have been taken by some sort of criminal element in the city to be used as ransom at some point. Uh, you'll pardon me for saying that you're saying that, like, I should care about that <clears throat> distinction. It is possible, if not likely, that the Dawn's Guard has been infiltrated and taken over by Dark Elves. Yeah, well, I'm, if you are saying... That. Yeah, that I uh, understand and agree. Um, so you are worried, then, uh, that revealing them in their spots will cause some sort of mass chaos or so get lots of people killed. There's that concern. There's also the concern that perhaps we need to take more immediate action. Perhaps it is my obligation to take more immediate action. Oh, you mean just go back and just start uh, assaulting them? What is it that you wish to do? My conflict is this. You are a foreign entity who is actively participating in the manipulation of powers within the Summerlands. Perhaps for the better, but as a representative of the, the Guard, I can't necessarily take that for granted. You've asked us to keep this job quiet. Uh, I don't know that it's necessarily my call to make what my job here is anymore. 
Hmm. Well, let me give you some details and insights that will hopefully help you along with your decision or whatever it's going to be. Um, as far as being a foreign power interfering with the sovereign nation of the Summerlands, uh, this nation was founded by my grandson, and I am merely trying to help protect his legacy, uh, including my daughter and my grandson. Founded uh, by your son. Yeah, founded yeah. by her son. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, founded by her son, she and she's trying to protect her daughter mm -hmm. and grandson. Um so as far as act she's not this is not me trying to take a hostile takeover or some sort of manipulative takeover of the Summerlands. Um my need for secrecy is because I don't exactly know who all I can trust inside the Summerlands, because if uh as you have now proven, there is Dark Elves infiltrating the Dawn's Watch, where else have they infiltrated? Um, honestly, if I had known exactly who you were when I had met this group, I probably would not have offered them the job. I was looking for somebody outside of both the Summerlands and even Pitax itself to do the job, so that they don't have real ties to either party um so and that i could hopefully trust them uh now your group uh did not trigger any sort of action from my spell when i that, that i used to see if you were telling the truth to me um so i'm assuming you were all truthful and that you are all actually here to help and that none of you are secretly dark elves working with dark elves that doesn't seem to be the case now you'll pardon my saying that i'm pretty sure everything you've just said makes us harder for me and not better i've lived quite a long time and i have only found that life is just a series of hard decisions Now, I understand that you want to maybe more proactively get rid of the element of what is currently in uh, Dawn's Rise. So, my original plan was to have you take the sigils and place them in the sewers secretly to reveal everyone. However, it would be much faster if you just placed them all above ground. Uh, my reasoning for wanting to do it below ground was to help prevent it from being discovered. But if you could find a way to very quickly distribute these sigils in the correct order, in the correct place, above ground, and making sure that they were all protected from anybody who knew what was going on or being stumbled upon, um, it would function exactly the same and could happen much faster. So, to be clear, you, a foreign entity, is here looking for unaffiliated assistance so that you can manipulate the internal workings of the Summerland. To personal help. benefit. For personal benefit. It's for the benefit of the Summerlands, as I'm trying to... For the to... benefit of your family. I'm gonna go get our friends outside. Thank you. <laughs> 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 You can see that as much as I might like your family and as much as I might agree with your ends, that doesn't necessarily make you substantially different than the Dark Elves. Do you know what it is the Dark Elves want? I don't. Which is, again, why I started with setting aside how much I might agree with your means, how much I might like your grandson. You're both okay. external entities. Then I will take my help and leave, and you can figure it all out on your own. Have fun. Oh, no, Goodbye. No, and she wait, just gets wait, up, wait, takes no, the bag, and wait. turns to go leave. Corn! 
At which point in time, what, should the guards uh, bump oh, into uh, us coming in? Like, No, you, uh, Tani is left. She's coming out the door to get you. So Emers, Tani is Emers, out Emers the came door out to get us. Oh, oh, Emers came out to get you. So Emers comes out the door going, uh, Rowan? Rowan, which is, this is just at the end of your conversation with, you know, okay. the guy, and you're already starting to turn around and walk back anyway. Yeah. But you guys turn around, uh, you start hurrying over to see what's going on, and just as you guys approach the door, the Sylvan Queen steps out of the door. Johannes! Uh, n- not out here, darling. I will... How far away am I? You're like... 50 feet, 40 feet. I will use dimensional hop to appear behind her. It doesn't work. Odd. Odds? You definitely tried. It just... Yeah. You didn't go anywhere. Huh. Cute trick. I'll walk inside. She goes, <laughs> hmm. She's like, you don't live to be as old as I am without preventative measures for things like that. Well, Matt, I uh, trust you've had an opportunity to have conversation with my uh, fellow travelers. Uh, yes, apparently the owlbear guard with you does not want my help, so... Well, well, hold on a minute, if you don't mind. Pardon me for being so forward, but uh, your daughter and I have been working pretty closely together to try to solve a lot of the problems that... And we have made it our personal goal to try to uproot this ultimately evil force, which is behind all of the manipulations that are occurring across the Summerlands. And we really are quite a capable crew. And uh, I truly believe that the best course of action here is to actually... We'll deal with our own internals, but I can assure you on my life sure. that we'll get this done for you. So, answer me a question. Where Happily. is my daughter? I now know where my grandson is. Where is my daughter? Truth be told, I don't know. Where was she last? Do you know where she was headed? Uh, the last I saw her, she was in the Summerland. Um, and she was with Phila, uh, and then we then left with Phila to go to the Owl God to procure some help, because Phila obviously is, as you know, is not so good around cities. And if I'm not mistaken, she said she was going to try to get some help? And... We haven't you, seen it. You, you know that she was that she told you that she was headed to pet tax to try and acquire help. Oh right, right. I thought she was going to find you. That's what. I, she said she was going to pet tax. I thought she was trying to find you. How? Truth long be ago told, was that. Uh, I'll tell her how many days. But truth be told, I I, I really it's like expected. It's been two weeks. My daughter has not arrived in pet tax. So it looks like we've got our next set of problems sitting ahead of us. She goes, here. She just hands you a bag yeah. and goes, I need to go find my daughter. Do with those as you will. Handle this however you feel fit. I have other things to do. And she just turns and steps back 10 feet from you. We'll and take care of it. Her two guards and... A sigil appears on the ground beneath them suddenly, and they disappear. Okay. It's okay. There's instructions. <laughs> and I like walk inside with carrying the bag. That was intense. Ah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, <I forgot laughs> yeah. This is red. This red. the whole time. I do it. Yeah. It looks yeah. Like, well, why is this lady so mad? <laughs> wow. Did Emrys say something? <laughs> like. It wasn't me. <laughs> Corin, I thought you were friends with her grandson. Doesn't mean that she should get to subvert the inner all workings of the Summerland. But it's is that what you said to her? Yes. What she's doing is not substantially different, except in the end, 
from what the Dark Elves are doing. But They're looking for people that are outside of the official channels to work towards their own personal goals without uh, going through... It would be truly ill for her to get in touch with the leadership to try to coordinate this internally. She that's interesting. On. That's interesting, because um, if you can't trust the leadership because it's potentially compromised, and the people that they are trying to get out is that corruption, I don't know, it, it seems like it's a right moral choice to me. Admittedly, admittedly, I'm a little bit slanted because I'm in this to try to help Philip. So we all want to help Philip. was in a powerful position. Her grandson was in, was very much entrenched in the Summer Guard. Hmm? He has access to an enormous network of people. Right, but you know why so Phila is, is at your headquarters right now, right? Because of goings on in Dawn's Rise. Right, and a lot of that is because of the corruption, and he was framed for the... And I understand that we're here to prove that, because your commander doesn't seem to want to believe that off the top of his head, and if you don't either, then I understand we were there, we know what Phila did, and we know what he did not do. And I can tell you, as sure as I'm standing here living, breathing for the second time, that Phila is a good man. And he is not guilty of the crimes that he's been charged with. Those were all trumped-up charges made by the Dawn's Watch, very likely because they are directly under the influence, as we have seen, of the Drow Elves. So that helps me sleep at night. If if they go ahead. I think ultimately she's trying to do what's best for the. Or the... I think the thing that you're failing to understand, Rowan. Yeah. Is that the means are as important as the end. Doing the right mm -hmm. thing the wrong way, is not substantially better, than doing the wrong thing the right way. All right. I'm not, I'm not necessarily asking for a lot from her. If she yeah. could have a conversation with the captain and tell him what the plan was, that's totally sufficient for me. But a foreign entity working outside the bounds of the law inside the Summerlands, mm. that's exactly what the Dark Elves are doing. It's the same. Well, I'll tell and you no what, Corin. No intention she is, the law is the law. I have great news for you. We don't gotta listen to her! I'll just, like, toss the bag up and catch it. Be like, she just said we could do with this whatever the heck we wanted any way we wanted to do it. We've already looped in Captain. So why don't we take a look at these instructions, figure out what we need to do, and then cover it off with the Captain and see what, uh, see how we can get, use their help or see what their thoughts are. Then we're working above board with the people that we know we can trust. And uh, maybe we get a little bit of help and save some laughs in the process. You see, Rowan? That's literally all it would have taken. And she didn't do it. Yeah. People well, in power are often far more short-sighted than we give them credit for. On that, we actually are very much in agreement. <laughs> I'll tie off the uh, I'll tie off the the pouch. You say we got instructions, Amherst. What do they say? Uh, well, yep, it's just it's know, just it's, it's just the name of the five sigils, a dr uh, drawing of each one, so you know which one is which. Hmm. It tells you uh the location that each one. Although it's weird because the locations are numbers, and then uh, there's no map. <laughs> No, there's no map. It's a look. It says like location, and then it's a series of numbers, and that's it. Oh, a series of numbers. Yep. Okay. And it's just, and then you're supposed to place each one in the order that it's listed on the sheet. Yeah, that. At those locations. All right. And then when you place the final one, it'll complete the the large the sigil the the larger variation of the sigil, mm -hmm. and will activate. All right. Did she say anything else about? how we needed to do it or what like uh, she said it'd probably be easier for us to do it above ground but right. ideally we would do it below ground but i don't think we'd work out too yeah there was a time limit or 
if we wanted to do it faster, above ground was better, but we had to ensure that they weren't interceded. Yeah. And so, so lack, we need to protect them or something. Yeah. We can think about this on our way back. I agree. We should get back to the captain. We should come up with a plan. She can send a message back to the guard. We can get by in there. And we can do something before more people die. All right. All right. Sounds good. Well, so if that's the case, then let's just collect our shit. We'll go up and collect the gex. Okay. And She's up there still reading. Uh, we got to go. We got a job oh. to do. What? Oh. Oh, uh, sorry. I didn't realize that how much time had passed. Okay, let's go. So, uh, I guess I'll pay the bill with uh, money. No, I'll pay the bill <laughs> with Jolinda. <laughs> yep, okay. Uh, you walk up to pay the bill, and I, I mean, so, three, six, uh, it comes out to be about 15 gold all in total. Sure. That's all drinks, all food, sure. all the so, beds for the night, sure. for the, the period of time that you stayed, actually stayed. Oh, okay. So I already paid her a little bit of that. That's fine. Yeah, so you already paid her six out of the 15. Fine. Okay, okay so I'll just pay her the rest, and I'll say thank you kindly. No trouble, as promised. Uh, quick question. Uh, the stables yeah. out there, do they typically have their own horses that we can procure as well, or are they, is that just some place to... Uh, well, the, the stables is mine. Um, if you're looking to purchase stables in town... Or, I mean, to purchase horses in town, um, you can try some of the uh, the farmers. I mean, see if they're willing to sell some of their spare horses or something. That's um, about the best I can do, unfortunately, for you. All right. Thank you kindly. Uh, where are the farmers on the map? So we'll have to go and get <laughs> our horses from the stable. And okay. if there's any farmers, it doesn't, there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where they, exactly where they're located on the map, but okay. you can ask around and then go find them and talk, um, which will lead you to be able to buy a total of. Let's find out. Don't we have horses? Yes, but only for but about eight more hours. Nope, uh, for four. You have four more spent hours. About four hours. Yeah. Since you landed. Yeah. So you oh. have about four hours with them. Uh, so you can procure <laughs> four horses. Okay. So the idea is, is that we get the four horses and we'll ride them. How oh god, we want to overland flight them and then the other ones are going to ride. That's really fucking awkward. So what's the math on overland flight for four hours versus actual horseback for the entire trip? Like, overland flight is how much faster than horse? Let's see. Overland fly just by fly speed of 40, 64 hours and eight in an eight hour period. Uh, so that's half of that. So 32. Yeah, yeah, 32 miles. For a horse. Mm hmm. There we go. Uh, let's see. Per day, a horse can go 40 miles a day. And how long is the trip? You said it was going to take 16 a, a, hours? A day, is, a day was worth of travel is considered eight hours. We so did two. So it's 128. Mm -hmm. Basically. According to the book. So you said how many days? Sorry, how forty? How many forty miles 40 a day? Miles, forty miles a day. That's with eight hours of travel. That's with eight hours of travel a day, because that's yeah, cause unfortunately they, they do have to travel. rest. Yeah. Um. Is that all they can travel, or all they can travel comfortably? That's all they can travel comfortably. If they travel more than that, they have to start making uh, constitution saves. Or uh, fortitude saves. Wouldn't we not be able to bring the other horses because we'd be going Fly. faster? What about what? What about um, 
on foot. How far can we go? Uh, let's see. On foot. Uh, you guys can travel. Let's see. Could we fly like as far as possible? Well, if and we, then get to another town and buy horses there. There's no, way. there's no towns on the way. It's this and then the city. That's the problem. Would, we. Do you think they would message us, as they knew the horses would be up? So our, I think our best math, three point two days, realistically, if we just take the actual horse and go. Whereas we're only going to get 32 miles, so it's still 96 remaining, and the rest of those 96 we've got to do on foot. But they would know that our, the time's up on the the horses they gave us, so they may check That's in not again. Their problem to solve. That is, they've already helped us. Like we were going to be 20 days on foot. Yeah. Right. So, um, like, both ways. That Galinda can tell us if there is a person who can teleport us or something. Like, is if there is a person who can help us? Yeah, it's worth asking. Uh, so you're going to go ask Galinda if there's anybody that can help, like, with travel stuff close yeah. by? Like, like means magical, magical means of travel? <laughs> uh, you can go back and ask Galinda. She's like, um... I mean, the fastest means of travel that I know. Uh, there's no magical means in Terran's Rest. Um, it's a small town. Just kind of people just stop on the way through between the cities. What about nearby? Uh, I mean, nearby, no. Like it, the closest place that I would send somebody for that is one of the cities. Uh, you hear oh, at the end of the bar, Mongo going, "Uh, ooh, I, I can help." Money. Yeah. I can help. I I have something. I I, I have it at home. I go get it. I be back. Goes and leaves. She's like, "Money, it's your. I want to take a nap." <laughs> <laughs> so he leaves. Comes back. It's like okay. Um. Yeah. Has like this like little box that he sits down on the ground. Okay. Uh, where are you going? Uh, Dawn. Dawn's Rise. Okay. Dawn's Rise. Got it. Uh, stand near this. And he, like, moves the tables and stuff out of the way. Oh, shit. <laughs> all right, I guess we're all piling in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Dawn's Rise. Where have I been in Dawn's Rise? I haven't been there in a long time. Think. 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 Think, 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 think. A bar? Think. But he he's just like thinking. And he's like, oh, I got it. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly you guys see this like light emanate from the ground. You look down and there's like a swirling sigil emanating out of the box. Uh, onto the we, ground. Did we collect our little horse icons? Like, we would have uh, done yeah, that yeah, while I'm he assuming, went to yeah. go and get his thing, right? I'm assuming, yeah, yeah. You guys were like, okay, you would have had them. And we'll return them to their icon form. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, hey, guys. Everything distorts and shifts. <laughs> and then it suddenly comes back into view. Uh, it's very windy. It's very bright. You feel... Very high. You are standing on something, but you can tell that you're very high up. Oh my god, are we on, are we on the city wall? You are standing on the city wall. Ooh. What? <laughs> Is there anyone nearby? Uh, there's a guard about 100 feet away, down the wall, is now running towards you. Uh, as soon as he's in hearing distance, yep. uh, I'm just going to shout him, like, get Captain Bilford immediately. Looks at you, sees the owlbear, and just turns around and goes back <laughs> to the other thing. <laughs> All right. And that is where we'll leave off for the evening. Wow. For the game tomorrow, for the next week.
Wow. Well, that was that was something. Well, we've got the trip, we've got the mission, we've got the, the quick way back. Met some old faces, met some new ones. Yeah, I'm gonna close this giant sheet I made in case people decided to start asking the Sylvan Queen a lot of questions about things. Nope, I'm just gonna berate her. I I was trying <sighs> to get there! Uh. You interrupted! She never gave me a chance to say that all she had to do was, like, send a message to the captain and call it a day. Uh. <laughs> That's not my royalty. Royalty. I was trying to be like, oh, you knew the founders? Please tell me about them. And you had to come in and actually ask pointed questions. Hey, why are you trying to subvert, subvert a sovereign nation? <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you all next week. Make sure you come back and we can see what we're going to do with these sigils. Ciao.